So I have the dust here in Unity and I also have modeled this flashbang. And this video is inspired by Counter Strike. More specifically by this moment. That's right, we're making flash blindness effect. To begin, I have this script on my flashbang, which will make it explode after some seconds, and that means it will destroy the game object, and it will instantiate this particle system. And that particle system emits this very bright point light with 7 million candela intensity. I add a reference to the main camera in my flashbang script because we want to check if we are looking at it when it explodes and if so, do the blindness effect. I create a method to check the game object's visibility. Get a tutorial, get another for free. We calculate the camera's frustum planes which is the six sides of this frustum that is the camera's field of view and then we can check if a point is inside this frustum. That point is transform.position of the flashbang. And then we do a loop to check the distance of the point to each plane using get distance to point and we return true if it's a positive value. Because according to the documentation, it returns a positive number if it's on the normal side of the plane. And camera's frustum plane's normals are facing inward. And if this didn't work for some reason, we return false. Now let's check if it's working by debug.logging some messages in the console. Okay, we go blind if you're looking at it, and we don't get affected if you're looking away. However, if you're looking towards it, but it, the explosion is behind an object, we still go blind. We fix this by doing a raycast. So change this into an if statement and inside we're going to do a raycast. A ray starts from camera's position and its direction is going from camera towards the flashbang. To get that direction, we subtract them on the reversed order. And then we check if a ray hits anything. And we return true if the hit object is the flashbang. And we return false if the ray don't cast us a hit. And also when the point is outside the frustum. Alright, all's working good. Now let's create the actual blindness effect. Let's add an UI image for the after image effect that is caused by flashbang. Change the canvas layer to default because we're about to add a volume to it. Create a new volume profile and call it flash blindness. Add a color adjustment and give it a post exposure of 10. And now we can animate this using the volume weight. Create a new animation clip and make the weight be at 1 in the beginning and then slowly fade towards the end. Also for the UI image, make it only be semi-transparent visible in the middle of the clip and then also fade away. Create an empty state to be the default state and transition to the blindness clip from the empty and any state. And transition back to the default empty state. Add a trigger condition called go blind and add it to the transitions going to the blindness clip. And also uncheck their exit time. Also tweak the blindness speed so it's not too short. Let's create a script for blindness effect. Inside, we need a reference to the image that's going to have the after image on it and the animator to trigger the animation. Then we have a public method to start a coroutine that will store the frame in a texture and assign it to the image and then trigger the animation. We wait for the frame to be rendered and then we store it in a texture. And to do that, we need screen's width and height. 
which if it doesn't change in runtime, it's more performant to have them outside the coroutine. That's why I initialize them in the start. We create a texture 2D with the width and height, and we give it a format, and we don't want MIP chain. Then we rid pixels, and we apply it to the texture. We need to assign the image sprite. We create a sprite with a texture and we pass width and height for its rect and we set the pivot to center 0.5.5 with 100 pixels per unit and then we trigger the animation. Now in order to be able to call that public method we need a reference to that blindness effect instance in our flashbang scripts. To do that inside flash blindness script, I'm going to create a public static reference which we're going to call uh, active instance. This way we can easily access it by doing blindness active instance go blind. Now as you can see, we have an after image overlaying the camera. What happens is we uh, store the frame inside an image which then will be put on the UI. To finish off, let's add an audio effect. I have this eye ringing sound effect which I'm going to drag and drop on the blindness effect canvas so that we can animate it. I'm going to animate it, uh, I'll make it enable the components and I'll set the volume to 0 and I'll set it to 1 in the middle of the clip and fade it back to 0 towards the end. Alright, that is it for this video. If you like this, uh, smash that like button and I will see you in another video. Bye.